So I just finished reading the book God's Korga yesterday. It's about a woman's journey from going to the convents, becoming a nun, leaving the convents at the age of 31, becoming a prostitute, working for PMs and working for herself, and then become a masseuse. And then, um, yeah, I'm not going to spoil the story. If you're interested, you can read about it. It's called God's Korga. And I don't know, I felt really heavy after reading that autobiography. Now, many people have told me, unless you have read previous um, books by the same author, you shouldn't jump straight into their autobiography because you don't really know if they are making shit up. Um, which I do agree to a certain point. You don't really know this person that well to know whether they are bluffing, they are telling lies or not. You, you don't really know, to be honest. But I think... I'm not reading these autobiographies out of... Um, under this critical lens. I, I don't read it to critique and to judge and to dissect everything. No, I'm reading it more so in the point of... From the point of... I don't know. I'm just... Um, I'm just curious, you know? And what she said about her journey from being a little girl, growing up and wanting to be in a convent really struck a chord with me. It, it touched upon something within my heart, you know? I remember going into the faith, the Christian faith, the Catholic faith because of this sense of guilt maybe I'm not good enough maybe I need to be redeemed so it was just at the right time you know when I met those people the missionaries that's when I was sort of just coming out of my deepest, darkest uh, moments of my life. Two failed suicide attempts. And I met them at that right time. And so I was really receptive to what they were saying about human guilt, about how we are not good enough. Um, if you're a Christian and you're listening to this, maybe I'm butchering everything, maybe you don't agree with what I'm saying, but... A lot of the people that became religious tend to come from a place of brokenness and they want to feel whole again. But rather than accepting themselves, you know, they, um, they become dependent on their religion. And I don't know if it's, it's the right thing for me to say this, but... I don't think that is empowering in any sense. Um, losing faith in yourself, losing hope in yourself, in your own ability, having no agency, and having to rely on this savior. Maybe I'm too boastful, maybe I'm too prideful, and that's my sin. But constantly condemning yourself, constantly thinking that you're not worthy, constantly thinking that you're not good enough. It's not good for your psyche either. Um, it becomes a total dependency on this, on this God. Now, my personal conviction is that within each and every single one of us, we have that soul, we have that God, your own God, within each one of us. And we all, all have our own personal truth. And for me, it was not, it was not the God that these missionaries told me about. Um, 
But yeah, back to what I was saying, this woman, she became a nun because basically of, because of abuse. Um, she was abused as a child. Her father, her own father, sexually abused her. And so she felt like she's always dirty. She's always not good enough. And that's why she joined convents. And throughout her stay in the convents, she was mistreated by the nuns. Uh, always being picked on, always having to punish herself. You know, the Catholic guilt is a very big thing. It's a real big thing. I felt that when I was in the Catholic church, you know. You know, every time I go to Mass, um, at a certain point in the Mass, everybody got to stand up and they got to... Um, it's part of the liturgy, you know, like the priest start off the prayer and then you follow. Uh, there's this one line in which you have to strike your breast. You have to say, through my fault, through my fault, through my grievous fault. Um, and yeah, Catholic guilt is a big thing. You're always made to feel like you're not good enough. You're, you're, you're... Your human nature is um, is a fallen angel nature, you know. Um, we have fallen from grace. We have betrayed God ever since Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. You know, we're always made to feel like we are faulty, we are guilty ever since birth, even though through no fault of our own, we, we are guilty. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I was really touched by this story. I, I probably shouldn't think too much about it, but here I am, I'm talking about it. Um, and yeah, she became a prostitute. Um, then suddenly she got all of this attention from all these men, all of her clients. And she felt something. She felt like she's doing good. But there's still this emptiness within her soul. Um, still feeling like she's not good enough. I don't know if this is the case for all prostitutes out there. But like it's... It does soften my heart a bit. I, I used to view prostitutes as people who are immoral. People who are evil. And they just want to... You know... deceive people, isolate men, make them feel even more alone. I used to think of them as evil people, but now I realize they're just one of us, really. They're just people like us. They're fallen people. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, that's enough rambling. I don't know what I'm talking about in this video. I guess I just want to share my thoughts on prostitutes, really. Um, they're people. They, they have a past. They have their own reason. They, all, they have their own convictions. They, all, they have their own personal truth. Um, and spoiler alert, this woman at the end she became spiritual again. Um, and suddenly she be, believes in God. After all these 50 years of being in the profession, being a prostitute, being a masseuse, now she's sp spiritual again, believing in God again. But not the version of God that um, the church has instilled upon her. You know, living in guilt is not the way to live life, guys. If you didn't sin, then Jesus died for nothing. 